<clears throat> the souls of the just are in the hands of God and no torment will touch them. How often have you heard these words from the Book of Wisdom and were consoled by them, especially if a loved one, family member, relative or friend has been taken from you? Today, the Church Universal celebrates the commemoration of all the faithful departed, those who have died in the friendship of the Lord and have gone before us in the way of peace. They now rest from their labors and their good deeds go before them, winning for them a place of eternal glory. Today's celebration is traditionally referred to as All Souls Day. Lest we should ever forget the dearly departed, this annual celebration of all souls is one means, one very important means, which the Church uses to keep each of us mindful of those who have died and gone before us marked with the sign of faith. In their place of holy bliss, the Church teaches and tells us that all who, who sleep in Christ find in his presence light, happiness, and peace. For those who have run the race and received their crown of glory where they are, we also hope to follow when our time is ready. But we must never become estranged from the spirit of our dearly departed, who now are numbered among the communion of saints, giving honor, praise, and glory to God. As we live here in the present, mindful of the hope that has been given to us, I'm reminded of the stirring words of St. Augustine when he said, Our hearts, O Lord, are restless until they rest in thee. In these words, Augustine struck a note of eternal truth. For those of us who confess with our lips and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ truly is the Lord, there always remains a deep and unsatisfied spirit, an unfinished sense of our being incomplete. Despite the happy and meaningful life we may live in the present, the journey of the human spirit always, always is longing and yearning for the deepest fulfillment of what God has promised to those who love him and those who remain in his love. This longing will remain so until God, who has begun his good work in each of us, will have brought it to its final completion. As Christians, as Christians, we live with the sure and certain hope of one day hearing for ourselves the words of Jesus as he presents us to the Father. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of time. Only then does the human spirit surrender and give up its yearning and come to know and embrace that which St. Paul has said in describing the kingdom in these words. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it even entered into the mind of those who love God the good things he has prepared for those who love him. Uh, how blessed are we who are the recipients of such an ever ancient and always new promise of eternal life in the kingdom of God, where sickness, ill health, and the wages of sin and death are no more. The task set before each of us today, especially as we seek to inherit the promise, is that we strive to allow grace to overcome sin to allow light to overcome darkness, so that our relationships one with another may be marked by acts of justice and our relationships are, 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 are noted by works of charity and manifestations of, of genuine Christian love toward one another. Whatever the trial of the present may be or the tribulation of the future may be, our hope is that we stay firmly rooted in love, in the love that has been poured out for us in Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. After a long and, and trial-filled life, Job is able to say, I know that my Redeemer lives, 
And to that, the church adds, and on the last day I shall rise again in my body. I shall look on God, my Savior. It's a moment we each of us hunger after. It's a moment of incredible grace. For those who may have recently lost a loved one, the immediate sting of death, loss, and sense of guilt may still be at hand. As we celebrate this Feast of All Souls, however, I encourage you to be ever conscious of the victory your loved one has achieved and the immeasurable spirit of joy that is theirs as they behold the very face of God. Indeed, from where they are, we ask for their intercession on our behalf, as each of us more intently affirms our call to holiness and continues our pilgrim way to the Father. Knowing that the faith which sustains us in the present and the hope which calls us to the future will not disappoint us, we give the Lord thanks today and we give him praise this day and in the days to come. Trusting in the providential care of God, let us place now our petitions of prayer before the Lord. Let us remember the needs of the church universal, that she and those who are called to leadership and service may be faithful to the mandates of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us raise up the needs of the hospitalized, the homebound, the unemployed, the terminally ill, those preparing for death, and those who serve as caregivers, that the power and presence of the Holy Spirit will abide with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us continue to pray and I invite your prayer for my brother Lawrence as he continues his cancer treatment. And in a special way, let us pray for all who are undergoing forms of treatment for ill health, that healing and wholeness may be theirs, we pray to the Lord. Lord in a special way, let us remember the numerous prayer requests of our viewing audience, that the Spirit of God may see to the, the fulfillment of their needs. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Finally, we pray for the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially those who are being remembered by the intention of this Mass, remembering in particular, too, those of our own family members and our relatives and friends, that from their place of eternal reward with the Father, they may continue to intercede on our behalf. May their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us, be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My friends, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, in your kindness, accept these gifts for our departed brothers and sisters and for all who sleep in Christ. May his, this perfect sacrifice free them from the power of death, and give them eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right.
Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawned. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. <laughs> 